Hello everyone, this is a real pleasure for me to be with you, at least virtually, and fortunately, thank you very much for your kind invitation. I'd like to share with you this presentation entitled Navigation, Disruptive Technology in Knee Arthroplasty. Here are my disclosures. Speaking about this topic in eight minutes is actually very challenging. Therefore, I divided my talk in eight main points. First of all, what is the definition of disruptive? According to the Oxford English Dictionary, this is a disturbance which interrupts an event, activity, or a process. But actually, what is disruptive innovation or disruptive technology? I would advise you to read some of the work of C.M. Christensen, who is a professor at Harvard Business University, to learn more about it. However, he and his team defined disruptive innovation at the end of the last century and revised the definitions more recently in a paper entitled, 20 years after the introduction of the theory, we revisit what it does and does not explain, uh, published in 2015. But to cut the story short, and as an example, Netflix was a disruptive innovation compared to TV and even even uh, traditional cinema. So when did it start? Uh, it actually started in the middle of the 90s and uh, uh, was officially operational in uh, 1997. I've been very fortunate to be part of the design and the development of this technology and also be present on January 21st, 1997 for the first ever knee replacement using navigation performed in Grenoble, France, by the two young men you can see on the pictures, Professor Dominic Saragaglia and myself. We reported uh, the first patient's outcome in 1998 in CORE. What was around at the time of knee arthroplasty? Uh, there were only five projects. Four uh, used robotics and one navigation. One was developed in Italy, Bologna, the other one at the Imperial College in London for UKR. On the other side of the Atlantic was one team in Chicago and another one in Seattle. Finally, a very early stage of a navigation system was initiated in Buffalo. None of these systems were in clinical use at the time. So, was the technology and the navigation in particular a disruptive innovation? According to Christensen and colleagues who gave five criteria to the original definition and nine after math, math the answer is yes. It would be too long to go through uh, all the criteria, so we are going to focus only uh, on two of them. First, disruptors create a market where none existed. And this uh, has been confirmed, obviously. And second, disruption is a process. Disruptors tend to focus on getting the business model rather than merely the product just right. And this was certainly true, but uh, a big mistake for most of the small companies producing the navigation technology as they compromise the quality of the product. And this had consequences on the mistrust that most of the orthopedic surgeons had against the technology at the time. As Christensen predicted it, this slide shows navigation companies trying to reach mainstream and failed initially compared to others uh, companies who uh, follow the path of sustaining growth. Another important definition. When an entrant tackles incumbent competitors head-on, offering better products or services, the incumbent will, uh, will accelerate their innovation to defend their business. In order to explore this briefly, this graph shows the patent's growth curve from 1980 to 2014 and demonstrates the reactions of the majors in orthopedics who invested massively in patents from 2000 when the technology started to be visible. And you can see the number of patents for navigation, but also uh, for PSI, 
And finally, robots increased dramatically. Next uh, definition, uh, number six, empirical findings show that incumbents outperformed entrants in a sustaining innovations context, but underperformed in a disruptive innovation context. Once again, in order to substantiate this briefly, this graph shows the normalized publications growth curve from 1980 to 2018 and reveals that in reaction to the visibility of uh, uh, navigation, the majors who did not have any chaos uh, system ready for most of them at the time drove enhanced uh, sustaining innovations. And you can see here the number of publications for navigations and then MIS, uh, which did not involve any technology, then later PSI and finally robotic technology as the majors found better business models for them than navigation for their markets. Number seven, did navigation influence the orthopedic forum? This graph shows the number of normalized publications uh, uh, growth curve between 1980 and 2018 regarding navigation and alignment with or without navigation. It is not a surprise uh, that navigations pooled the number of publications related to alignment as it was one of the premises of the technology. But it also triggered numerous papers on non-navigated uh, surgery topics, as you see here <clears throat> on the graph. Number eight, is this disruptive innovation mainstream yet? This graph illustrates the percentage of uh, knee replacements performed uh, with navigation in the Australian registry uh, from 2003 and 2000 and, uh, to 2018, and the answer is yes. So where are we with uh, this technology? In 2003, we were at the innovator stage. Then in 2012, uh, was the early adopters or visionaries, and finally turning up in 2019 at the early majority pragmatist way. Only remains the late majority and skeptic surgeons. In conclusions, navigation was definitely disruptive as Vulcano is eruptive, both catches old long eyes and erases old long sides. Many thanks for your attention. Bye-bye.